Hi, everybody. Welcome to Kensington Connect. We are so glad you're here for our very first session. I am Connor Duncan. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the Director of Community Partnerships here at Kensington Park Senior Living. This is our very first session and we're really excited to be with you. I hope you're all doing well. Some of you might be brand new. Some of you might be from our previous sessions, but we hope you're healthy and happy new year and hopefully the vaccine it's on its way to you. Um, I wanted to introduce a few very special people today. And we've got uh, Chef Marissa Harris here to do our cooking demo. And we have Mary Mel who will do our introduction. She's our executive director. If you have any questions at all, feel free to write in the chat box, let us know anything you need and uh, ask questions. We have some special residents here for you. So uh, thank you so much for being here and let's get started. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, we're happy to be here on this snowy day, almost Valentine's Day. Um, I'm very pleased to have all of our Valentines here with us and uh, especially pleased to introduce to you Chef Marissa Harris. Uh, she is a graduate of Johnson & Wales Culinary Institute, and she learned to cook side by side with her dad and then continued her passion for cooking for seniors and has been doing it for many years and pleasing many, many people with her creations. So we are happy to turn it over to Marissa and her three Valentines. You will you'll meet later on and uh, enjoy the show. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to, thank you for being here at Kensington Cooks today. I'm really excited to have our Valentine's Day special with you all. Uh, today, we do, you are in for a treat. So I have some special guests that are going to appear. Um, today, our menu is going to be uh, seared scallops uh, with a lemon risotto. And our dessert is going to be a parfait of lemon pound cake, a chambord, which is a raspberry liqueur, and mascarpone with fresh strawberries. So something simple that you can create at home for your loved ones. Uh, but I'm going to start and throughout, I'm gonna have some special guests come out. Um, we're going to start off today with our scallops. Uh, I chose sea scallops, which are my favorite. Uh, they're bigger, they're sweet, they're very sweet. Uh, I know some people may have a seafood allergy or allergic to scallops, um, you know, or if it's just an allergy to scallops, you can use shrimp, you can use any kind of seafood you like for this. Uh, but I wanted to keep it light. Um, but sea scallops are very, very sweet. They pair well with a, a white wine, such as Sauvignon Blanc, preferably like a drier wine, more acidic wine. Uh, Pinot Grigio is nice. Uh, today, I do have a bottle of Prosecco, which I'm going to open up shortly while these are cooking. Um, but I'm just starting off with a hot pan. You can use a cast iron skillet, just a heavy pan for your scallops. You do wanna get them hot. When you do cook scallops or really any protein, you wanna make sure you pat them dry. If you have wet meat and you go to sear it and you're looking for a nice color, you're really just gonna wind up steaming your meat as opposed to putting a nice sear on it for color. So keep that in mind when you're searing off like a steak, you do want it uh, dry and you do want it room temperature. It helps with uh, getting as much flavor and as much caramelization. So I let these sit out for a little bit on a paper towel they released a lot of liquid. Um, you can, I just want to season it just with a little salt and pepper. So while you're doing that, I'm going to invite Trevor Connor, who is our resident services director, to come on and share a little story about his, his Valentine uh, and a sweet story. So welcome, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Connor. Uh, so, hey, hello, everybody. Happy New Year. If you were on here last year, it's great to see you again. And if not, hello. 
Um, I wanted to share a, a great story uh, with you and maybe a story and a half a little bit while Marissa is doing the scallops uh, because I have to preface my proposal that I did to my wife with understanding why she never knew that it was coming. Uh, because when we were dating, I like to be very creative and so at one point in time, I flew her up to San Francisco for dinner as we lived in Southern California at the time. Now, uh, this was before 9-11, so there was a little bit more freedom. So she thought she was going to the movies with some friends of ours. Well, the thing is, I had already secretly packed a whole suitcase, put it in my friend's trunk, we were on our way to the airport, even though she thought she was on the way to the movies, but she forgot her license. And I said, no, you're a student ID, we, we need to show it. So we raced back home, so we're rushing now. She doesn't know we're going to the airport. I have her blindfolded and I have headphones over her ears so she wouldn't be able to hear anything around her. So we get to the airport we had just gone to church earlier in the day, so she had this long, tight skirt that was down by her calves. So imagine this woman walking through an airport with blindfolds, headphones on, and I had a sign around her neck that said, it's my birthday and I don't know where he's taking me. And so she's walking through like this. We were the last ones on the plane. When we get on the plane, I take the blindfold off and everybody on the plane claps and sings happy birthday to her. So these are the type of things I had done in the past so that when I asked her to marry me, she had no clue. Now, the thing is, we've been married, this year will be 20 years in May. So go back now, 21 years, when I asked her, we were at Laguna, no, Long Beach, where they had uh, these gondolas. And so I was, this was a makeup actually Valentine's because it was a couple weeks past Valentine's. And so we get there, I have a camera in the gondola already. I had already again gone behind the scenes to do some things and had some friends there that were behind the scenes. So we get on the gondola, they serve me dinner on the gondola. A guy is at the back who of course Things. Actually, you know, he had a radio that was playing Italian music. And in the harbor, there are bridges that you go under amidst all the million dollar homes on the side. The camera that was in the gondola, I said, was a part of this dating show that the guy asked if we would be a part of. For which, of course, my wife and I said, yes. So now we're going in the harbor. It's near sunset. And then we go underneath one of the bridges. Now, the custom is that when you go under the bridge, you're supposed to kiss. And I had someone at the top lowering a gift. So she gets the gift. It was from my parents, whatnot. And this went on about three other bridges that we're kissing and whatnot, the music playing. We had just finished seeing the movie called Message in a Bottle, if you remember that. I had written this poem on this paper and had all burnt in the poem. It was in the bottle. The guy says, you know what? I hate to ask this, but there's a bottle in the harbor and I hate trash. Do you mind taking it out? He pulls out the bottle with the message in it. She's like, oh my goodness. Takes it out. She reads it. And then right there, I get on my knee and I said, baby, I'm sorry. I don't have the ring right now but I just had to say what was from the heart, would you marry me? And she's like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, you know, yes, yes. I, and then all of a sudden from outside on one of the other bridges, at this time it's dark, and there's a little light that's flashing up at this guy in all black with shades on with a saxophone. And if you know the song by Gato Babriati called Europa, so it's like, And it's playing. And she's like, oh my gosh, that, that's our song. That's our song. And she looks over there and she's like, oh, tears in her eyes. And I was like, oh my goodness, what in the world? And then she said, don't scare me. And then she almost jumps out of the gondola 
as the diver comes up with one of those treasure chests you have in the aquarium, comes up on my side, it's like, and I take the treasure chest, open it where the ring was, and I asked her to marry me. And after hyperventilating, she said yes. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> And so, of course, our 20th anniversary is going to come up. We're going to relive all of that. And so Valentine's, of course, is a great day. I said I had to share it. And uh, thank you for your time and all that. You guys have a great Valentine's with the one that you love. Wow, Trevor. Thank you. That was thank you, Trevor. What a lucky lady. Thank you. I think uh, we have another guest coming up, right, Connor? Yep. So we have Christine to come up because... Of course, February is also Black History Month, so I just wanted to talk to Christine a little bit about her heritage and her past. Hello, Christine. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? You can have a seat right in that hot seat. So, Christine, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about, uh, you know, in your lifetime, what has made you the proudest about your African-American heritage and culture? Um, just the history of all the people that have made it famous because of all of our heritage and you know this is really good to me it's outstanding because uh, especially the heritage of the black people we have terrible thoughts that some people have made and now to see all of this means quite a bit to me. Thank you, Christine. That's very special of you to share. And I just wanted to, to know what does black history sort of mean to you and your family? Are there any kind of celebrations or traditions you have this time of year? No, it's just that uh, I grew up in Washington and we had the entire month of February where we had all of the different uh, stars, people that had made it and uh, who were famous. We started the first day of February and even in the kindergarten, we would have part of plays in the auditorium of a black uh, person. Of, and this is how we learned. We had, I had one student that was with us, Thelma Williams. I'll never forget, we were in the elementary school and every year she would have, we would have plays, and she would use the dialect of the stage. And it was so, so, so refreshing that we didn't know the difference because we were young. And each class would have something for the month in the auditorium about Black history. And this is what I remember. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing a little bit about your history. And I know Marissa has a glass of champagne for you. So thank you for coming on. And I'll let Marissa get started with her risotto. Thank you, Christine. So Marissa, I'll let you get started with your risotto and then I'll welcome a, another guest in just a few minutes. So oh, let me just tell you, I, I just seared off my scallops. They're just sitting here resting. They're only going to take about two minutes on each side. You definitely don't want to overcook uh, scallops or they get nice and rubbery. And that's just not pleasant. So about two minutes on each side, maybe a minute and a half. Uh, and then they're going to do some carryover cooking when you let them sit. Um, I do have some lemon risotto that I'm going to show you how I prepared and then I have a finished product uh, just to kind of put it together. Um, I'm just going to go over this and then I know we have another uh, special guest that's going to come up. So risotto. What is risotto? Uh, it's an Italian rice. 
it's creamy, it's starchy. Uh, you can really do a lot of things with risotto. The biggest thing is to get as much flavor. Whenever I make risotto, whatever I'm making, I want it to have a lot of flavor. So how do we do that? Uh, the best thing when you make a risotto is you need a stock. You want a nice stock, whether it's a mushroom stock. Today we're doing lemon. I made a nice lemon stock. You just want to fortify the stock so it becomes as flavorful as possible so your risotto tastes delicious. If you like risotto, you love risotto. Maybe it's not your thing. I love risotto. It is a little on the heavier side. Uh, that's why I have it uh, paired with some scallops, which are light. I'm going to saute, start off with sauteed onions. You can use shallots, whatever your preference is. You can omit it if you want, it just adds a nice flavor. While this is cooking, I'm going to add just my raw risotto. Risotto is also known as arborio rice. So if you see it at the store, it's also called arborio. Same thing. You just want to let it toast a little bit to get a little flavor. That's just going to add some flavor. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. And while this is toasting, I have a nice bottle of wine. You can use any wine. You wanna use a nice white wine, depending on what you're doing with it, but I have white wine to kind of deglaze the pan, which you'll hear in a minute. It does add flavor. You're gonna wind up cooking out the wine, so it's, you're not gonna you know, feel anything from the risotto, but it does add a nice flavor. So to this, you gotta open it first. I'm gonna add the wine, which is just gonna deglaze it. Maybe a quarter of a cup. Give it a little stir. Risotto is one of those things that when you're making it, you have to stay there with it. You have to babysit it. Can't walk away or it's gonna turn into a big blob of mush. You wanna put a lot of love into it. Uh, as I mentioned, I have uh, a lemon stock. I just boiled uh, some vegetable base, or you can just cook a bunch of vegetables with your water, add lemons to just kind of get that flavor. Um, and you're just gonna slowly add stock to this while you're stirring the entire time. I would like to ask a question and maybe, I don't know if we have any prizes today, but if anyone can guess how long it takes to cook the risotto. Oh, that's a great question. So if you want to write in the chat box, you can write how long it takes to cook risotto. And we will have a giveaway for you, but it'll be a surprise. Perfect. So we got 45 minutes from Mary. We got 15 minutes from Carrie, 30 minutes from Georgette, 30 minutes from Marnie, 25 minutes. Oh, wow. We have so many people writing. 20 minutes, 35 minutes. All right, Marissa, tell us the answer. Okay, the answer is 20 minutes. All right, 20 minutes. So let's see who got that answer first. One minute. Okay, Laura Miller got it. Excellent. All right, thank you, Laura. So we will send you a little prize goodie this week. Okay, congratulations, Laura. So like I said, risotto should be nice and creamy and delicious. And you'll know it's cooked because it won't have that crunch bite, but it won't be mush. It'll be somewhere in the middle, just like an al dente kind of pasta. Um, although it tastes very different than pasta. Um, you can make risotto in advance. All you have to do, like I have here, is just add a little liquid to it and just to kind of uh, loosen it up a little bit uh, for this. I've already seasoned it how I like it, but some fresh uh, lemon zest goes a long way and adds a nice, nice flavor. I'm just gonna add this uh, risotto is best finished with some butter, uh, which I've already added. Uh, butter, and uh, I didn't put it in this time, but a lot of times I do also finish my risotto with some fresh Parmesan or pecorino cheese, which is just delicious. Um, I know we have another guest coming. I'm just going to stir this and get this hot. But Connor? Yep. So I want to welcome another one of our residents. Her name is Millie. She lives in our independent living. And she's going to share a little bit about her uh, Valentine as well. So welcome, Millie. Hi, everybody. My name is Millie 
Savage, and what I'm going to talk to you about is uh, Valentine's Day that I spent with my husband. I spent over 60 Valentine's Day without But the one that's very special to me, at the time I was going with him, met him in 54, this Valentine was given to me by him, February 14th, 1955. Wow. And it was very special because not only was it a beautiful Valentine card, but I didn't know it at the time, but he wrote me a beautiful romantic love poem. We often, as we were going together and wrote to each other just about every day, periodically he would write me poetry. So uh, that particular Valentine is very special to me. I just know how romantic he was, but I will share a funny story with you. We were married in 56, so we want to fast forward about close to 50 years. I was living in Williamsburg at the time, and it happened to be Valentine's Day, and he hands me this card. I knew we were going to go out to dinner, and I said, oh, thank you. So when I opened it up, it was beautiful, but I turned to the back, and I said, what? This is from the Heart Association. So I said to him, and he started laughing. I said, what? And I said, you didn't go out and get a card? He said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. He says, I can go out and get your card or give you $5. I said, I'll take the $5. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a great sense of humor. And uh, I'm happy to share all this with you. Thank you. Thank, Millie, thank you very much. And happy Valentine's Day. Did you get your glass of champagne, Millie? <laughs> There you go. Thank you. That was beautiful. And everyone looks so nice in their Valentine's red and pink. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Marissa, do you want to just go over what was on the plate? I know you zoomed right. in, but we'd love to see it again. Sure. So I heated up my risotto. I hope you can see this. It's beautiful. I made ahead of time a parsley oil. Uh, a lot of times when you go to a, a nice restaurant, you might see uh, oiled uh, sauce like this, which really, it can pack some flavor, but it's really for a nice color, a nice contrast, because we have the white scallops, the white risotto, and a white plate. So I wanted to kind of pop it. And really, you could do this with cilantro, parsley, any kind of herb, fresh herb you like. You're just going to add your herb to a blender, slowly add oil, blend it all, and then you'll just strain it and it becomes this beautiful herb oil you have. So this is just parsley, just to kind of keep the, the scallops lubricated if you wanted to kind of just mix everything together. It uh, doesn't necessarily need a sauce, but I hope you all can see that. It's, it's very beautiful. It's elegant. Gorgeous. I just added some fresh uh, microgreens to the plate just for some color. Um, and then the scallops, you can just add a little bit of salt to the top just to kind of add that pop because the scallops are very sweet. So it's going to add a little bit of saltiness to it. As I mentioned, we're serving it with a nice Prosecco, which goes beautifully with this, or white wine. If neither of those are, are your choices, then whatever you want to drink. But it just goes very well with uh, something acidic. Um, so there you have it. Our Lovely. So now I think you're going to take us into our dessert, which I'd love to hear. I don't really know what Chambord is, so I'd love to hear more about that. Sure. Let me just gather everything. This is the Chambord. I'll, so Chambord, it's a black raspberry liqueur. It's sweet, it's delicious. Some people use it in cocktails. You can definitely use it in dessert. It's a little versatile, it is sweet. I don't know if you would necessarily drink it straight. Uh, you can also add a little bit in your Prosecco or Champagne. Adds a beautiful flavor. Um, but that's what Chambord is. If you've had it, you probably love it. If you haven't had it, 
Try it. So I think we have another special guest that's going to assist me today. Connie. We have our last special guest. So we're going to have Gloria come up and she's going to help Marissa make this lovely dessert. Welcome, Gloria. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Gloria. So, Gloria, you can step over here. Or you can sit. You want to sit up and pull this up. I'm just going to have you assemble when we're ready, okay? Okay. okay. So I have this nice lemon. My theme, I guess, today is lemon. I have this lemon pound cake. I cheated a little. I didn't make it from scratch, but you can definitely make it from scratch. I'm just going to cut it into bite-sized pieces. We're going to make a little parfait. So I'm just going to cut it up. You can use plain pound cake, plain cake. You can omit the cake. This dessert is delicious all by itself with the mascarpone and fresh strawberries and the chambord. You do not need cake at all. However, why not? It's Valentine's Day, right? So I'm just gonna cut this up. Next, I have some fresh strawberries. You can use whatever berry you like if you have a preference. As I mentioned, this is a black raspberry liqueur. So you can use raspberries, you can use blackberries, you can use whatever berry you want. Uh, but I definitely recommend berries. Gloria, can you scoot over just a little? Because you're right, I can see the heart right there. You're closer to Marissa. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, mascarpone cheese. We've used this before in our other segments if you've uh, tuned in, but it's very versatile. It goes very well with savory dishes, it goes well with very sweet dishes. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's sweet. It's not sweet. It just takes on a very nice flavor of whatever we're making. Uh, it's Italian, it's like an Italian style cream cheese. It's got a very smooth, rich texture, different than regular cream cheese. Uh, you can pretty much, I think, find it at any grocery store these days. Um, but my dad made this one night for dessert. I am sure it was for a special holiday. It could have even been dessert uh, without the cake. And it was to die for. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to have my friend Gloria help me assemble. So I have four glasses. You're going to probably want something a little see-through so it looks attractive and you can see through it. If it's opaque and you can't see through it, then not fun. So I say, Gloria, let's start with a little bottom base, just a little dollop in each of these, okay? Work together, that's plenty. Because we're gonna make a parfait, we'll stack them maybe two times. Sorry, you get a little messy. That's okay something you can lick off your That's fingers. right. That's right. Okay, there we go with that. Then I'm just going to drizzle. We're just going to layer it. I'm going to drizzle. I'll put my finger over it so the whole bottle doesn't pour out. Just a little drizzle. And then to this, I could throw in the cake. Once I throw in the cake, you can throw in a few strawberries. And the chambord, we're gonna do one more layer. It's gonna get into a cake, get a nice flavor going. Perfect. And then we're gonna do one more. Flying strawberry. <laughs> and we'll do another layer of Mars. All right, that's plenty. And then we'll top it off with a little bit more. Is your mouth salivating? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And some people might be a little apprehensive about the mascarpone. I mean, if, if I never cooked with cheese, I might feel that way too. But I'm telling you, it's delicious. 
You'll be pleasantly surprised. And we'll move this out the way. I'll add one more and then Gloria, maybe you can add two more or three more strawberries to the top. And then we have it. Why not? I'm going to add a little bit more. <laughs> smells good, right? Yes, wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, and there you have it. So I'm going to invite all my friends up here. You can leave your champagne and come back up. Good for you. Thank you. You're welcome. You got to get a bite with everything in it. Come on. Millie? Millie, we can't see you back there. Come in, yeah, come next to Marissa. There you go. All right, and All right. before, I just want to tell you what we're going to have for Valentine's Day here at Kensington Park. So for dinner that night, uh, we're going to have lobster mac and cheese as one of our entrees, or we have a coffee roast skirt steak with a chili lime butter. And we offer vegetarian options uh, at dinner every night, which we have a fried cheese ravioli with a balsamic glaze and fried basil. So it's, and, and let me not forget, we have a duo of desserts, which is a mini chocolate hazelnut raspberry empanada and a red velvet parfait. So wow. It will be nice, nice and happy come Sunday night. Very so, yummy. Hey, thank you to my helpers and cheers to everybody. Cheers. 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 Thank you so much. That was such a great presentation. And I hope everybody enjoyed meeting our residents and Trevor and Marissa. Is there any questions for Marissa as we close out our first Kensington Connect session? Anything about food, residents, anything? Oh, we got, we, Carrie says the special guests were all amazing. Thank you, Carrie. All right, well, I think we are all set and we will see everybody back here uh, next week, same time, same place. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll have a presentation about Edith Wharton on film from author uh, Parley Ann Boswell. She's a professor in Illinois. So thank you so much and let us know what you need. And I also wanna let you know that we will be sending you the recipes for today. So be on the lookout for that as well. Marissa, thank you so much. Great job. Bye.